Hello students, so today we would be discussing the sixth topic in our NSA 25 series where we discuss the high yield topics from Obstetrics and Gyne. So today we would be discussing about an important drug in obstetrics that is magnesium sulfate. So before going into the topic proper, let's have a look at these previous questions. So a patient is started on magnesium sulfate for severe preeclampsia with impending symptoms. So what is the first sign of toxicity? All right. So the next question, which among the following is not a sign of magnesium sulfate toxicity? We'll come back to the questions once we discuss the topic. All right. So we would be dealing this topic in when do we give magnesium sulfate? How to administer magnesium sulfate? That is the common regimens. What is the therapeutic range? The toxicity as well as antidote of magnesium sulfate. So first is when to administer magnesium sulfate. So magnesium sulfate when given parenterally it acts as an anticonvulsant. So it is given for patient with severe preeclampsia or eclampsia as such. So as to prevent or treat the seizures. So it is given in patients with severe preeclampsia, patients with imminent symptoms of eclampsia as well as patients of eclampsia. All right. Next is how to administer. So this can be given either as intermittent intramuscular injections or as an intravenous infusion. So there are various regimens available, but I want you to know at least about two important regimens. This include the Pritchard regimen and the Zospan regimen. So in case of Pritchard regimen, this is given as an initial loading dose followed by the maintenance dose. The loading dose is a total of 14 gram and the maintenance dose is 5 gram intramuscular in alternate buttocks every 4 hours. So how do we give this loading dose? This loading dose is given as 4 gram IV initial bolus that is 4 gram 20% magnesium sulfate is given as IV bolus followed by 5 gram 50% magnesium sulfate in alternate buttocks. So 4 plus 5 plus 5 that is the total of 14 gram which we talked about. So this is regarding the intermittent intramuscular injections. What about the continuous infusion? So a common regimen is Zospan regimen. Zospan is given as 4 gram IV bolus slow followed by 1 gram per hour infusion. 4 gram followed by 1 gram per hour infusion. How long should we continue this? So this is given for a period of 24 hours post delivery or post the last seizure episode whichever is later. So, if a patient had a seizure after the delivery, this has to be continued at least for 24 hours after the seizure has developed. Alright, whichever is later, please remember that. Alright, so next is regarding the therapeutic range of magnesium sulfate. So, this has a very narrow therapeutic range that is 4 to 7 milli equivalent per litre. So what does this imply? There is high chance for toxicity. So there is need to monitor this very vigorously after once we give magnesium sulfate because slightly outside the therapeutic range, there is chances for toxicity to develop. So how are we going to monitor her? So the monitoring includes checking for the deep tendon reflexes or the patellar reflex. Second is checking for urine output. Checking the respiratory rate. These are the three things that we are going to monitor. So it's important that you understand at what level these toxicities are going to develop. So the options were loss of knee jerk, respiratory depression as well as cardiac arrest. So you might remember your internship days where you had to roam around with a knee hammer in your hand. Yes. So the first thing that is going to go is the knee jerk. So the knee jerk is the first thing that is going to go followed by respiratory depression and the last is the cardiac arrest. You should be aware about the levels as well. So the knee jerk is absent when the serum magnesium level is more than 10 milli equivalent per liter. Please have a look at this picture. When it is more than 10, the knee jerk is absent. When the level is more than 12, 
that is more than 12 milli equivalent per liter it will lead to respiratory depression or paralysis so we have two lengths so you can remember the two from there it is 12 all right when is the heart affected heart is affected at the level of 15 milli equivalents so heart is a five letter word so you can remember the five with it so it is 15 10 12 and 15 so the antidote that is given for magnesium sulfate toxicity is calcium gluconate it's also very easy to remember just remember tens that is 10 ml 10 percentage calcium gluconate over a period of 10 minutes that is what you have to understand is given slow iv 10 ml 10 percentage over a period of 10 minutes all right so now let's come back to our previous question we and already answered this the first sign of toxicity is the loss of knee jerk regarding this which of the following is not a sign of magnesium sulfate toxicity so please note that the loss of knee jerk cardiac depression respiratory paralysis are all effects of the magnesium sulfate toxicity but oliguria is as such not a direct effect of toxicity oliguria happens because the sin severe preeclampsia the severe preeclampsia itself can cause renal damage as well as leading to oliguria and the magnesium sulfate is usually excreted through the kidney that is why when there is oliguria we are more concerned regarding the toxicity and we are monitoring for oliguria in a patient while the patient is receiving magnesium sulfate when do we say it is oliguria if the urine output is less than 100 ml over the past four hours hope that simplifies the topic on magnesium sulfate so we'll be again back with a very high yield topic from obsengain for the innocent series so please do subscribe so that you are notified when the next video comes so until we meet next time bye bye